Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with IRAC Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you. Yay. Yeah, more stuff to complain about, of, uh, of course. Uh, we're going to get into uh, the anti-gun debauchery that is currently uh, playing out in Congress. Uh, a couple of anti-gun bills that have been submitted and, and they're really wanting to push forward pretty quickly. Every indication that we've seen. Uh, we are going to dive into this and discuss uh, where they're at right now. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank our friends at SDI. Um, so Nord Desert Institute, they've got some great gunsmithing programs. If you're wanting to increase your overall scope of knowledge in the firearms technology realm, learn how to work on guns, cool stuff like that, definitely a great resource to check out. Um, they've got some really great programs, financial aid, um, really, really great people. Check them out uh, if you're looking to get into a career in gunsmithing. Uh, Sonoran Desert Institute. Uh, definitely big thanks to them for supporting Gun Gripes. I heard they take GI Bill too. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, quickly as well, before we get cracking on this gripe, I do want to mention uh, we are almost sold out of our medical man cans. Uh, now, the uh, survival cans are, are, are gone. We, we're out of those, but we do have some medical cans left. we got a great box of medical gear for sale right now. Uh, if you want to support the channel, that's one way that you can directly do so. Pick yourself up a man can. Uh, really great boxes. I'm super excited to get those in your hands. And you've been pumping out some new t-shirts lately. I'm yes, sorry. plenty of shirts and other uh, paraphernalia that you can support the channel with as well. We just passed the anniversary of uh, Waco, you know, back oh, in 93, boy. right? So, yeah. Uh, there's, there's some saucy shirts on the side. There site. are certainly some salty shirts available. So if you want to go purchase <laughs> one, you can support us in that way. Please do. So let's um, dive into this right now. Um, so... We've already done a video on HR8. Uh, you guys remember that was submitted way back in 2019, yeah. maybe even before that. But I think 2019 uh, was when that bill was originally submitted. And that's the background check bill. Mm. Uh, we already went into a good bit of detail. Um, that bill is, is, is in the House, it's assigned to committee right re now. Resurfaced. It has so, resurfaced. Uh, we talked about this before, guys. I mean, this is a universal background check bill, which would make private transfers have to go through the same you know, process that you purchase a gun from an FFL you know, with, with a 4473, the whole nine yards, transfer fees, and basically a backdoor way of registering every firearm uh, you know, out there, more or less. I mean, there's a few uh, exemptions and such. I mean... Uh, some family exemptions and whatnot, gifting guns. But for the most part, if you want to sell a gun to another private party, you will have to go to a dealer and you will have to do a 4473 and there will be a record of that firearms transaction. All right. So there's there's some loopholes here and I mean it in the standpoint of logical loopholes. Yep. All right. So there, there's, some, there's some issues with this bill. We've discussed it in previous videos. Okay. But one of the major issues is, all right, a serial number on a firearm, a make, model, and serial number can be used to determine, you know, maybe when a firearm was produced, when it was made, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing. You know, most firearms companies keep a record of when a firearm was made, at least that. And then an initial transferee, right? So if a firearms manufacturer made a gun and then they sent it to a distributor, mm -hmm. okay, there's going to be a record of where that gun went to its first owner outside of the company, which would be like a distributor or maybe a gun store or something like that, depending on the size of the gun company. Sometimes they sell direct to gun stores. Sometimes they sell direct to consumers. But generally, the way that firearms transactions occur in the United States is most large firearms uh, manufacturers sell to a distributor, which will then in turn sell to a gun store, which will then in turn sell to you, the end user, the consumer. So you've got a paperwork trail Right, so say that the firearm in question is used in some form of a crime, and all right, you've got this bloody scene or whatever mm. has happened, and now you've got this gun, and you got to determine where it came from, who owned it, whatever. You, they can trace that back to the firearms manufacturer, who will then go, okay, we sold it to this person. All right, then that person sold it to them, and they can follow the chain of ownership of that firearm. So, the difficulty in this, and where I have a major issue with this is it basically assumes uh, that type of scrutiny just for the average person who just simply wants to uh, buy, sell, and trade their own property freely within the state that they live in, right? There's already intercommerce issues with handguns, right? You're not supposed to sell a handgun to somebody over state lines and it not go through an FFL. So um, the feds have, have done this really crazy thing with handguns where they're really funny about the way handguns are sold and transferred and everything like that. The thing is, though, once a firearm leaves a, an FFL and you're the consumer, you've bought it, 
it is your property to do with and dispose of as you see fit. So at this point, right, all right, if a policeman pulls me over, for instance, and I have a gun in my uh, possession, right, mm -hmm. in, my, um, in my vehicle, which is essentially an extension of my abodement, mm -hmm. we're not even talking about that complication, right? So someone can't just come in your home and say, collect all these guns together and go, all right, what do you have a 4473 on and what do you not? So if, you, if they can't just run in your house without a warrant and do that, then how can they even ask you about what's in your vehicle, which is already an extension of your home anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So there's that complication. And then two, okay, all right, the policeman says, where, where did this gun come from? And I go, well, yeah, my grandpa left it to me 20 years ago. How do they know the difference between 20 years ago and 20 minutes ago? There, there's no way to know. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not required to keep a bill of sale um, when you sell a gun to somebody as an individual, right? So if you sell a long gun at a gun show or if you just... Whoever, right? It could be a friend, an acquaintance, a relative, and you sell someone a gun. You don't always make a bill of sale. Now, you're encouraged to, but you're not required to maintain a bill of sale. It's probably good rep records keeping to, to do just so you can say, hey, this is where I disposed of this. But you're not required to do that, right? Some people, when they sell a gun to an individual, they may so, hey, say, hey, let me take a peek at your carry permit and just make sure you, ha you are in possession of a carry permit. But you don't have to do that, right? At the end of the day, though, if a firearm's used in a crime, it's not like this bill would change anything in terms of the way that that firearm would be traced back to the original manufacturer and then all the way up the line to who it was disposed uh, to on a 4473. Mm -hmm. The issue here, uh, really, if anything, this just adds one more leg in the paperwork trail, right? And it fringes on your rights. They have no way of knowing. Mm -hmm when you obtained that firearm that you bought used. Okay, so say this bill goes into, uh, into effect, right? How do they know if I bought a gun 10 years ago or 10 minutes ago? And, and what authority does that policeman have on the side of the road in a traffic stop, which is probably where 90% of this questioning would come into effect, right? Someone goes, well, all right, where'd you get that gun? Well, what does it matter? You don't know if I, if I was given that gun as a gift 10 mm -hmm. years ago or 20 minutes ago. Yep. There's no there's no standards. There's no way to know. So what? You're going to be riding around, and if you don't have a receipt for the gun in your car, they're going to confiscate the gun and sort it out and figure out if it's stolen or if it was used in a crime. That's absurd. And there's a lot of people that already get pulled over by the police and because they don't know any better, right? A lot of policemen will go, well, I'm going to run the numbers on this gun, right? They'll take the gun back to the vehicle and run the numbers on, on the firearm. They don't. You don't know they're doing that. And if that firearm is stolen, you think they're going to give it back to you? No, they're not. So it's just really ambiguous. And it just seems like they're going to have a really hard time with something like this. And the issue, too, <clears throat> is that, and, and I'm sorry, I'm dragging this out. But okay. when you look at H.R. 127, we knew H.R. 127 was so ob obscene and extreme in every single way that you could never expect H.R. 127 to grow legs. It has no co-sponsors. Sheila Jackson is insane. Of course, and even, even the people in her own state know she's insane. Nobody, No Democrat is willing to stick their neck out and co-sponsor that piece of legislation with her. So that tells you everything you need to know about H.R. 127, H.R. 125, whatever, right? <laughs> the, the problem with this bill is that the appearance is that there are Republicans that are going to support uh, this legislation, okay? Now, that's an issue, right? So th this, mm. this bill has a higher chance being low-hanging fruit, and that's why they're starting low and working their way up. So don't think, oh, well, this won't affect me because of whatever reasoning you may have in your mind about H.R. 8 or the, uh, the H.R. 1460, uh, 46 that we're about to go into. Mm. The issue becomes... Um, you know, they're going for this low hanging fruit. And if they get it, they're going to go, all right, well, that's one thing. That's one check out the box. And they're going to go on to the next thing. They're not going to stop here. This isn't a compromise. And this is not something where anybody should be in a position to compromise on from the get go anyway. Well, um, one thing I want to mention about this particular bill is basically like what Eric's saying is where are they going to, what's the starting point? You know, so if it, it does get enacted, I mean, they don't have every gun that's out there on some sort of, you know, backdoor registry from the get-go. So the only thing they're going to be doing is just from that point on, 
requiring every gun sale to have a background check associated with it, you know, or 4473. I mean, it's just, it's asinine. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. And, like, I won't need to see the receipt for that old savage right there. Okay. All right, this is a really good example right here. This is yeah. this is my grandpa's. Whoop. This is my grandpa's savage. Show it to everybody. Um, it well, it's a Sears Ranger, but these were produced by Savage for mm. Sears and Roebuck. Uh, pre sixty eight. Oh gosh, yeah. This, this gun was probably made <laughs> well, in well like, before sixty eight. This was probably made in like the early fifties, right? Yep. So no serial number on this gun at all. Not even hardly a model number. So you know Sears uses the dot matrix type of thing where they'll do uh, three digits and then a dot and then two digits. That's the Sears SKU system. And it goes from every every piece of Sears gear that you could possibly ask for back in the day. Mm. And you look at the Sears number, it's Sears number 102.35. That's not a serial number. It's a catalog that, number. That is a catalog number, right? So <laughs> the thing is, yep. you do you realize how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of guns like this are out there that do not have a serial number and are not required to have a serial number, right? So this gun doesn't exist. When these guns it doesn't. Are, when these guns are transferred, well, it does. But. If they're transferred <laughs> on like a forty four seventy three, I believe you know what's marked is like NSN, no serial number, because it is pre sixty eight. There's clear instructions for that. It's just right. my grandpa's not alive anymore. Yeah. But 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 here's that's the gun. a perfect example. I mean, this is just. Right. It's just asinine. It's just a way to backdoor registration. This is feel-good so. legislation that actually doesn't have any real legs, and that's the issue about it. And and I'll, I'll just quickly mention this before we move on to um, H.R. Uh, 1446, is that the feel-good legislation is an issue, right? Because there have been a lot of Republicans that have jumped on the bandwagon of saying, yeah, I'll support universal well, background checks. Well, that's not too bad. And then the NRA coming out and saying, oh, we support universal background checks. Who wouldn't want universal background checks? We're trying to keep hands out of the hands of criminals. And, and and that's the issue. It's like, but they don't understand. Is like you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. So first, it starts out with this innocent appearance. The appearance of this bill is innocent. It starts out as this innocent. Oh well, it's just universal background checks. What's the worst thing that could happen? Well, then they wind up saying, well, we've got this universal background checks bill, but. In order for it to be completely enforceable, we have to register every single long gun, handgun, every kit and caboodle yep. uh, from from you know top to bottom yep. in the entire United States. Oh, and by the way, in order for this to even make the oddest amount of sense to anything, even resembling uh, legal speak, here we go. We have to have 110% compliance across the board. It means every single swinging person must register every single gun right now. That's not going to happen. <sighs> criminals don't register. The, criminals aren't going to register anything. Criminals don't care about 4473s. Criminals are going to make, buy, or steal guns. They don't care about these laws or these rules. They are operating outside of the laws of man. They operate on their own purpose and their own uh, evil, uh, right? So you're subjecting the citizens to this crazy stuff that you can't even really enforce. And then the uh, the 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 the, the Criminals are just going to walk around it. They don't care <laughs> that, that about rules and laws and things like mm -hmm. this. All right, and I'll quickly just mention one more thing because I feel like it's really important. Also, from a fiscal standpoint, we're, we as a country are going through all of these things right now, and we're spending money that <sighs> we don't have, right? So there's all this fiscal irrespons irresponsibility that exists in Congress, right? All these spending bills, no matter how you feel about the COVID, you know, packages and all this crap and all this spending like what 19 trillion dollars that they're thinking about just throwing in the uh, wind 1.9 oh this, okay this most recent well, yeah, yeah. Is just just move million. one of the points around no big deal but 1. yeah 1. so 1.9 1. 1. 9 trillion they're just going to throw out in the wind and let it flop out there they don't even realize the fiscal irresponsibility or even care about the fiscal irresponsibility of something like this mm -hmm. even if they were to get some form of registration. All you got to do is look at Canada's long gun registry and how much of a dismal failure the long gun registry was. Canada has way less guns than we do. Like, not even a tiny iota of the amount of firearms that are present in the United States of America. They don't even realize. You think the ATF is backed up bad right now? Imagine how pissed they would be if they were responsible for having to maintain some form of a wide, far-reaching registry and then getting probably thousands upon thousands of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of potential applications mm. that would take years and years and millions of dollars to properly catalog and keep up with. 
We can't afford this, even if we wanted to. It's just not fiscally a viable option at all. Mm-hmm. It's going to cost way more money than the be- the perceived benefit would ever even be. And it's even just a <clears throat> perceived benefit. It's not an actual benefit. This is just feel-good legislation but, that's still not going to stop a bad person from doing whatever they want to do. But, Eric, we just print some more money and, and we just go forward with it, yeah. man. Come on. All right. The Enhanced Background Checks Act of 2021. This is H.R. 1446. So <laughs> Two current, bills, guys. All right, so currently... All right, if you are an individual, you go to a gun shop, you buy a gun, all right, you don't have a carry permit, so you have to go with a background check, okay? National Instant Criminal Background Check System, all right? NICS check is what we call it. If that check comes back incomplete, all right, like it can't be processed right at that time, then the FFL has to hold the firearm for three days, okay, while waiting for a response. If no response is gotten back from the NICS system from the FBI, then the firearm can be transferred. All right. So this bill increases that time period from three days to 10 days. All right. But not only, <laughs> not only does it increase the initial three-day waiting period, okay, after a NICS check comes back incomplete. After that 10-day period, the FFL has to submit All right, this is stupid. They have to submit an electronic petition for review to the U.S. Attorney General certifying that there is no reason for them to believe that they wouldn't pass the background check. All right, talking about the consumer. All right, now, if there's no answer to that petition after 10 days, then the firearm can then be transferred. So you went from a three-day period which after you could transfer the firearm to a 20-day potential period. To a maybe 10, if not 20-day. Also... All right, this bill changes the language of the category of prohibited persons. All right, Uh, currently, those who have been adjudicated as mentally defective, uh, among other prohibiting factors, may not lawfully possess firearms or ammunition. The bill would change the language to uh, adjudicated with mental illness, severe developmental disability, or severe emotional instability. So those are the changes that this bill would include. The standards by which, of course, they're going to have the key to the Pandora's box, and they're not going to tell you what the standards are for what those particular things are. So wait a minute. Severe de- developmental disability. So wait a minute. All right. Someone has um, uh, cerebral palsy. or what, What's, the, um, what's the, the one where your spine doesn't generate well? Uh, osteoporosis. Osteoporosis. Um, but what's or, the, uh, oh, um, bah. Bah! What's it called? Spina bifida. Spina bifida. So what? You, you have some developmental disability, and and all of a sudden, what? Your life isn't worth anything because you because you have some uh, disability, right? I mean, so so what's the standard, right? Oh, a person in a wheelchair can't buy a gun. Oh, uh, what? Severe emotional, emotional instability. instability. Now, when I think severe emotional instability. My idea of severe uh, <laughs> emotional instability <laughs> Here we is going to be considerably, <laughs> considerably in a, in a different field uh. than what some bureaucrat in Washington who's making these rules determines severe emotional instability to be. Now, I've seen severe emotional instability. I've seen grown men cry and lose their, lose their minds over some very heinous situations they've been in in their lifetime. Mm-hmm. And and that uh, you know sometimes you're put into very very deadly and and terrible circumstances and, and it can weigh down on a man right yeah. so my my when I think all right this person is very emotionally unstable mm-hmm. my my view of that might be completely different the government could simply just say oh well you saw someone smash their hand in a, in a filing cabinet at work up oh, you're mo- you're emotionally unstable oh you, you take antidepressants you can't own a gun yeah or okay. Uh, you are a victim of domestic violence. All right, you're a woman whose whose husband beat the crap out of you. Okay. Oh well, you're emotionally unstable. You can't buy a gun. Hello. Wait a minute. So mm-hmm. that that guy that she needs to be defended from. She needs to own a gun in case that and say somebody ever tries to hurt her. Right. But you're gonna say, oh, you're emotionally unstable. You can't buy a gun in case your ex husband tries to break mm-hmm. in your your house. A jealous ex husband or ex wife or whoever. So the problem is. You're giving them the keys to Pandora's box to change the rules. You're giving them the ability to change the rules. And they're going to make the rules as they see fit. And they're going to paint 
the average gun owner or the person who's trying to purchase a gun and having a background check ran on them, they're going to paint them with the broadest brush in the worst color with the most strokes, and, the, and they're going to throw that fish net out there and try to catch as many, many situations where they can turn someone into a prohibited person as possible. That is one of the scary things about this particular bill. All right. Another thing, too, is it puts the burden of proof on you solely. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it takes that burden of proof out of the hands of the government and puts it in your hands. Okay, so you have to prove that you're innocent. You're guilty until you're proven innocent so you can transfer this firearm. But as of right now, it's the government's burden to prove that you can't own that firearm, that you are a prohibited person. That's their burden, okay? You are innocent until proven guilty in this country, typically. But in the case of this bill, the roles are completely reversed. And what ticks me off with this whole situation is that we have, okay, you have this background check system in place. Well, they can't even handle what's going on right now with the huge influx of new gun owners and all the craziness that's going on in the current market. So background checks have been delayed left and right, okay? And people say, well, I'm just going to go get a carry permit. But then they go to their their uh, probate court in their county that they reside in, and the probate court tells them, oh, sorry, we're not accepting applications for new carry permits because we're six months backlogged. You know, that's the kind of stuff that's going on right now. So, I mean... People are having a harder time now buying firearms than ever before. And at a time where more Americans are choosing to own a firearm for self-defense than any yeah. time in U.S. history, this is the most firearms have been sold in the shortest amount of time and to the widest demographic of people, right? Mm -hmm. You've got Republicans, Democrat, different political spectrums, people mm -hmm. from all different race and religious backgrounds and, and different positions of, you know, one, one guy can barely afford a gun, one guy's buying, you know, H&Ks as his first whatever, you know, gun he's ever owned. So you got people from all different walks, walks of life choosing to defend themselves with a firearm, mm -hmm. right? So at a time when... Our government should recognize the fact that, look, the civilians have the right to self-defense and to life and liberty, and, you know, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed, right? That language should hold more true now than any other time in the history of our country when you've got all these people that have woken up and realized that they need to own a gun and protect themselves, protect their communities, their household, their significant other, their children, their livelihoods, mm -hmm. right, are at stake, so at a time when we should, as a country and as a government, we should go, hey, all right, maybe we should have some programs that help educate people mm -hmm. on proper firearms handling, firearms ownership. Hey, you're new to guns? Okay, cool. Here's some classes we're going to give uh, in, in these major cities, and you can come and get free training. Like, You know what I mean? Have programs in place that help support our rights and lift our rights up, mm -hmm. not try to break them down. You know, and mm -hmm. what the idea of buying a firearm for a lot of people is already so confusing as it is already. And you're going to add even more regulatory burden into the process and confusion into mm -hmm. the process. And part of the issue with this particular bill as well that I see is that it would turn a fire over-the-counter firearms transaction into a, uh, let's just call it May issue versus a shall issue, yeah. right? So as it stands right now, the government can't just say, I don't like this person. We're not going to allow you to transfer a gun over, you know, whatever, from 4473. You know, they can't just deny you because they don't like you. You're either a prohibited person or you're not. Mm -hmm. The difficulty for their part is they don't want a lot of people mm -hmm. having guns. So they've got to come up with more cruel and unusual ways for them to deprive you of your rights. The issue with this is they can go, well, we get an extra 10 days. No, oh, by the way, we got an extra 20 days. We mm -hmm. got however much time we need. They can simply ignore you. And that turns an over-the-counter 4473 transaction mm -hmm. into a shall or may you, know, issue. you you may you may get to exercise your rights, but right. you you may not you might not actually be able to they they could literally just ignore you. They could. All right, so here's a little food for thought for you. All right. Consider the person out there who's listening to us right now or maybe aware of this bill going, eh, not a big deal, eh, whatever, you know. Maybe if i got to wait a few more days, that's fine. Or i got a carry permit, so I don't have to wait anyways. All right, think about this, for example. you got to buy a gun, okay, in the future after this bill potentially becomes law or whatever, right? And you've got to potentially wait up to 20 days to have a firearms transfer. All right, so what happens when the NICS system is changed to include social media history? 
you know, or things that you've said online. Like we've talked about the social credit score in, in older videos, like what they've been pushing in other countries like China. Okay, y your ability to garner services and, and goods and things from not only the government, but just, you know, the, the, the public in general relies on you being an, a, a, a nice and upstanding citizen. So if you may have said something that goes against the grain in your social media posts, then who's to say that the government eventually down the line can't say, oh, well, we don't like what you said on social media because you've made threatening statements uh, and, and you support the Second Amendment. So uh, we can't transfer this firearm to you. Or even worse, they so. could just say, well, you don't agree with us politically, therefore, eh, you're oh, on the naughty yeah, list. We're yeah, not going to let you buy a gun. You're on the wrong side of the aisle, just like liberals right now are trying to demonize uh, you know, half of the population of the country because of who they voted for. Uh, we have that, that goal going on right now. I mean, Eric talks about, you know, being woke to, uh, you know, new firearms owners being woke to the Second Amendment, but we've got another woke going on in the country right now that is completely abhorrent and just defies logic entirely. I mean, it's just pure insanity right now. I won't go too far Anyways. down that rabbit hole, but I would like to just mention quickly that these people out here that claim to be woke, they're not really woke. And, and the issue is, what it comes down to is, is they're not really voting and, and, contributing actions in their daily life based on what they actually believe in their hearts, they're doing it because they're worried about being canceled. So this cancel culture, it's about pointing the finger at someone else and bringing them down in the hopes that they won't come after you. But that's not how it works, right? If you're in the, you're in the gulag, right, and there's a piece of bread on the ground, that's the equivalent of beating up the other four people so you can get the bread but knowing that eventually you're going to be the person getting beat up. Mm -hmm. It's like they know what the end game is. And a lot of these, these companies and these personalities and these you know, social media stars and these, all these random people, Hollywood and musicians and, 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 and football players and all this crap, everyone's got to get there, oh, I'm woke, look at me, I support this, I support that. But do they really? I mean, what work are they actually doing in the communities to support the end game that, that, that they claim to be a part of. All right, where are all these millions of dollars from these rich people uh, being put into the local communities to help minorities or to help certain groups of people, right? Where are they building these rec centers and parks, right? Where are they getting involved in the, in the Boys and Girls Club and being mentors to these young people, right? So it's not about action. It's just about, oh, see, I've got this badge. I fit into this group. Stay away from me. Don't don't come after me. See, I support you. But they don't. They really don't. They they don't do anything based on their actual morals and values and what they really believe in their heart. They're just trying to not get ate by the beast, and mm -hmm. that's the issue. <laughs> anyway, I mean, and, and that and that's the bottom line. They're not real. They're fake people. We keep we can keep going. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's not. It doesn't come from the reality of actually supporting what they say they support. They just want to have the appearance. They want to keep up appearances. That's all it is. So anyway, um, well, we have uh, yeah. <laughs> just to just to give you an idea of how how crazy this country is right now, we have a uh, an appointed director of health and human services, I believe, uh, who is a transgender person who is advocating for the administration of puberty blockers for young teenagers, uh, you know, prepubescent children. Um, and can't give a straight answer when asked a, a question regarding whether they support that or not, you know, in, in committee hearings and such. That's the, the insanity that is going on in this country right now, and I hope we get past it. But anyways. I hope we do too. And I, I think that at, at the end of the day, all right, whether it's legislation involving guns or whatever, enter whatever widget you want to enter in there, Jeez, right? It doesn't matter what it has to do with, right? If we as a society are gonna be fair with ourselves, we have to understand the science and the data that goes behind every decision we make, right? You know, if a government cannot correctly even use data and facts and science and logic in their brains to make decisions, then why why do we need them? Why? What are they doing? <laughs> Makes me wonder how they got there in the first place, but then you have to look at their constituents. Right. You know, you, 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 you don't put Mars rovers on Mars with, with hopes and feelings. You, 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 you put a, a rover on Mars with facts and science and experience and, and smart data people. And, and intelligence, <laughs> right? And, 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 you know, 
<laughs> that's just not the way the world works, right? Nope. Like we might really want the world to revolve around our hopes and our needs and our and dreams emotions. and our wishes and our emotions, <sighs> but reality is is that life sucks. Life is hard. Life is not fair. We may not like it, but at the end of the day, you know, you've got to use your brain and your wits and your courage and you've got to look with both eyes open and see the world in front of you and tackle it based on previous knowledge, right? What do we do? We learn from our mistakes. We move on. We grow and we become stronger um, by learning from our mistakes. You don't just go, well, I really, 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 really wish that this would happen. That's not reality. So if we're going to run this country and we're going to be a superpower and be like one of the most you know, developed and, and awesome countries on the planet, we need to act like it. You know what I mean? We've got to use the facts. We've got to try, you know, really get to the science and use data and facts and statistics and be fiscally responsible when it comes to these types of things. Mm. All of this reeks of waste and it reeks of really bad reporting and it reeks of people who have no idea what they're stepping into. Hmm. And they know it. And, and that's the thing. It's all feel good. It's not <sighs> actually what they think it is. And well, hopefully we laid that out here. I hope so. Well, it's going to be difficult for us to you know play the part of superpower with an administration who is groveling at the feet of any country that you know President Trump might have uh, offended during his tenure. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to watch over the next few years. I bid y'all adieu. We are, all right, so we, we are gonna we are gonna end today's video here, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this gun gripe. Uh, we have many more on the way. There's tons of stuff. We try not to dive down the rabbit hole, but the thing is, guys, look. This, Sometimes it happens. Sometimes we fall in. Firearms ownership and the I guess the minutia of gun laws is something that affects all of us, whether you like guns or not, this still has some form of an effect, right? There are way, way more gun owners now than there were even just a few years ago, mm -hmm. even just a few months ago. January set a new record for NICS checks, right? So it's crazy how many NICS checks are getting put through and how many people are buying guns, right? Yep. We need that nine or 10 million new gun owners to be active and to contact representatives and complain. You need to be a fly in the ointment. Uh, you can go over to Gun Owners of America. We're going to put their um, website link down below. Uh, but you can, you, you've can you got all kind of great information over on GOA. Go check it out. You can read a little bit further. Uh, we'll also link uh, the language for the bills so you can read through them yourself. Uh, it is a little confusing. Purposely confusing. Yep. Because they don't want you to understand it. But you can read it in, in the Greek uh, legal speak, and, and then there's also uh, we can we can also link to this other uh, website here on Rocket, Rocket FFL uh, that gives a little bit more of a plain language breakdown of some of this stuff. They, so. they always do a very good job breaking these bills down yep. so laymen can understand them. Yep. So, so guys, have a great day. Many more videos on the way. Don't panic, but stay focused, mm -hmm. and let's head this thing off and smash it in its tracks. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time. See you guys.